But the hoax theory does not make sense to Dr. John Bindenagel, who has studied the Bigfoot phenomenon for 40 years. As far as the eyewitness accounts go, they go way back to the mid and late 1800s. People were seeing Sasquatches. They didn't know how to categorize them. It was called wild man or a monster. Bindenagel says the witness accounts from different parts of the world and from separate points in time lead him to believe these sightings are more than just a series of hoaxes. The eyewitness accounts are very interesting, partly because of the consistency and partly because it's not like people come forward wanting to talk about this. In many cases, you have to drag it out of them. I think it's a reason for us to listen to them and try to make sense of what they're telling us. Got the May apples coming up. If you listen real close, Ed, you can hear Ohio Turnpike over to our left. And this stretch of woods here, I guess, goes for God knows how far. First time I've been here, of course. We're unfamiliar with this area. I forget how many acres he said he had. Five or six acres of this is his. So we just have to be careful. I don't want to be stumbling across somebody's private property. Getting a little swampy back in here, but I'll tell you what. If we're going to find any kind of tracks, it's going to... They're going to be here. So we're just moving along real slow. Getting all kinds of little forest critter tracks, but nothing large yet. Oh. Do you see it? Yeah. All right, you might want to check that out. That's the owner's tree stand. Nice. Heads over that way, gonna investigate a tree snap over there. Could be natural from storms, but nonetheless, we'll check it out. Heads yeah, over there, checking it out. It's a pretty cool area. It looks like it's gonna start to get thick on us back in here, but. We're gonna try it. Ooh. I cannot tell if that would be a boot, shoe, print, or a footprint. Definitely found the game trail. I wonder if I should just follow that. We'll go in as far as we can, Ed, but that it looks inviting, doesn't it? Yeah, I was telling, saying earlier, you can definitely hear the Ohio Turnpike. It is so hard to tell on this stuff. Everywhere you look, it looks like something's moving through. Most of it's deer. Oh, boy. Keep going. This is this is pretty cool. Oh 
man, my boots are supposed to be waterproof. Come on. Well, I tell you what, something can definitely hide out back in here and you never know it. It like totally vanished in this. Oh, no, there he is over there. It's like a million little saplings. It reminds me of like being in the jungle. Definitely deer. But every once in a while, I'm picking up on something larger that I just can't tell. Well, I guess Mother Nature can fool you. Man, it just seems like every once in a while I'm picking up on much bigger impressions and deeper than, but looks like up in there we might be coming up on some pine forest area. I don't know. Man, I know we're making a lot of noise coming through here, but it's not the point to see one. We're just looking for any kind of trace evidence. Some of this is really thick. Swamp oh. Swampy. Looks like a little poison ivy every once in a while. Other than the May apples. Hey, we made it to a little clearing, finally. Yeah, swampy. One. Did you look at the map and see where we're at? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I mean, it's a long ways of just nothing but woodland. Ow, ooh. Well, really haven't found much, but one thing we haven't found is um, any boots or shoe prints from people. It's like this is just one of them areas of woods that nobody comes to. And it's so thick in, in most of the places, it's, I don't see where hunting would do you any good. You couldn't get a good shot off. But man, I'm talking thousands of deer prints, raccoons, there's all kinds of other wildlife back here and I lost Edward I gotta find him I'll be back